All right, welcome back to the Reverse Selling Podcast. Today with me, I got my good buddy, Mr. Jared Wright, the owner of the Share Group. Jared, welcome. To What's show, up, everybody? Friend. Thanks for having us on, Brandon. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So listen, I want to talk about something I think that uh, for the real estate agent community, Jared, they we don't talk a lot about, and that's picking a niche. You know, there's all these cute sayings out there like riches or niches, but it is true. I mean, if niches you look at- stitches. Oh, no. That, there you go. Exactly right. right. But the reality is, is like, if you look at every other industry outside of the real estate agent community, if you look at doctors, lawyers, I mean, right. people are specializing in a niche and the more uh, specialized they are, the, the greater their income is. And so I want to bring that thought, Jared, to the, uh, today's episode yeah, and communicate to realtors the value of going out there and mastering a niche in there's nobody better at it than you. I mean, you are the owner of the share group and what you guys do is help agents specialize in uh, not only picking a niche, but getting the actual leads to go out there and start communicating with that niche. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I was just going to say that's kind of how our, our our relationship was formed based off of our, our niche, right? Um, yeah. Something you've been preaching even before the the times of, uh, you know, the absentee owner, but but that was our, you know, our flagship niche um, because of the way that the data is licensed and how we intertwine it. It really does allow um, the customer, you know, a lot of uh, accessibility to different segments. And when I say different segments, um, you know, even putting a, a property value uh, range or restriction is, is, you know, something that could help, you know, within your niche. Right. And so yeah. it eliminates, you know, what you're, What's your size of home? What's your specific? Um, but yeah, niching is is something that that's kind of how we built our company. And in, in all honesty, we're really good at finding those highly highly motivated off market uh, homeowners that are that are niching to you know be motivated to sell. Yeah. So let's. That's what I want the whole episode to be on, Jared. So I want I want to give I want to give the real estate agents some context. All right. So right. I think traditionally what real estate agents do is like a lot of them will, will circle prospect. They'll just kind of canvas a neighborhood, a right. neighborhood. They'll cold call a neighborhood. They'll make just listed, just sold phone calls. They'll send out postcards to random people. And so I want to, I want to get a little scientific and then we'll have some fun with this. And hopefully people will really, really have a huge aha moment. I hope in their business and in their career. Right. So there's a process in the wild called natural selection. Okay. Ooh. I actually, I talk about this in the book uh, that I just wrote. You guys can get that on, on hey. Amazon. There it is. There it is. Yes. I love it. I had yeah. it. I had it. Dude, that's a shameless plug, but I had to, I had to. Plug have, yeah. I love it. I was just telling Drew, we were, we were asking for the audio book because we want to, we want to get our sales guys uh, dialed in on it, uh, you know, sooner than later too. So yeah, it's a, it's a great plug, brother. Yeah, it's coming soon. Um, we're we're working on the audio version. We're all, we're already working on version two of reverse selling: how to sell anything to anyone. So yeah. that's for all salespeople. But that's a that's another. Yeah, episode. I had a light bulb moment, dude. I mean, just trying to fathom what you know reverse selling really was, and I mean, you hit it right on the head for just how how, how I am, who I am, and how we sell. It's just amazing, you know, to, to be able to to provide a value, right? <laughs> to, to earn the business. that's right. It's, it's kind of a no brainer, I think. But it's it. I think it it's it reads so well, man. I love it. So good. I'm glad you like it, man. I can't. Well, I don't read books it. either, by the way. I tell my kids I watch Netflix to read. So that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So so let's let's so let's talk about this this niche thing. So yeah. um, so there's this process in in um in nature called called natural selection it's it's how hunters hunt essentially right and so what they do and so we can keep it moving forward is the hunter will look for its weakest prey and i always tell the story jared when i'm when i'm teaching in front of a group of realtors i talk about how lions hunt like the antelope that cross the river right so you can picture this in your in your mind you probably watch some discovery channel at yeah. some point in your life and what do they do? Well, they just sit there. They don't even they don't even get up. They're laying down as thousands of antelopes are crossing the river, right? right. It's not until something happens, Jared, that they actually get up and get excited. And that thing is when they identify the weakest link. Now I know it's sad and people listening to this podcast might be like, "Oh, that's so sad." I get it. 
but they're <laughs> picking a niche. They're saying, okay, instead of going after all of the antelope and catching zero, right. what's the highest likelihood that I'm going to eat and get fed? Well, let's, let me watch and see what is the weakest antelope crossing the river. And right. that's the one I'm going to go after. So now we take that same approach, Jared, into real estate. Instead of a realtor calling random homeowners in a neighborhood, we don't know if they're going to sell or not, right? Right. That's like chasing all the antelope. Right. The work that you and I do together, and certainly the business model that you that you make a living off of, is trying to identify which homeowners have the highest likelihood to sell a home. Would you agree? I would totally agree. All right. So let's get into some nitty gritty. So did that little analogy make sense to you? Meets makes uh, complete sense, and I'm the I'm probably the antelope crossing the river late. You know, the old guy that uh, that maybe they're hunting on here pretty soon. But uh. <laughs> there you go, there you go. Well, and that's just, I mean, the the funny thing is, is like most real estate agents, it's like, well, hey, what do you specialize in? They're like, specialize anybody that's looking to buy or sell a home. I'm going to do that. Which I get, I understand. But what we're talking about is this. Let's get really, really tactical here. So we're talking about working with a company like yours potentially. Mm -hmm creating a list of prospects who we already know before we call them, before we go knock on their door, before we send them a piece of mail, before we send them a message on Instagram that they already want to sell, or it's likely that they want to sell. So here are some examples. I want to talk about this. Right. Certainly your claim to fame uh, are absentee owners, right? right? We'll talk about each one of these, these niches in a second, sure. but it, that's only the start. You know, I even like, creating list of homeowners that have a home that's free and clear. Yep. Been there for 20 years or, or, or more. Yep. They've had a major life event or they've, um, they've recently become empty nesters or they've recently retired. I mean, the likelihood of these people downsizing is so high. So now the first time a realtor hears this, Jared, like, holy shit, that's a great idea. Instead of me just calling random neighborhoods, cold calling all day, why don't I get a list of 500 people that meet that criteria? So let's talk about that a little bit. Um, and maybe, you know, how you guys are able to create those lists. Yeah. Talk of, yeah. So some of the, the segmented uh, niches that we've created, you know, obviously the, the elephant in the room or the, the lion at the river is the absentee file. But, uh, but for us, the other niches that we have a lot of success with um, is like a likely to sell category. And so what we're able to do through the transactional record and the demographic record is create a, a multi-sourced um, you know, selection based off of equity, length of residence, age of the homeowner, size of home, a number of children, age of children. So we're able to kind of put together uh, you know, a very targeted uh, niche of people that are likely to sell based off of uh, how long they've been in their household. Um, from there, we've able to kind of, you know, a lot of the same uh, concepts that we tell our, our customers to target is, you know, don't, don't come off the message of what you're, you're, you know, the niche you're going after per se, but, but we're able to target distressed uh, homeowners too. Um, same kind of category. They, they still want to see, uh, see a fair offer for their property, but we're able to predict if their income has changed in the last 12 months or they're upside down on their mortgage. And yeah. so a lot of realtors might want to specialize in that niche. Uh, we segmented off of that from a bad credit. So it's kind of like a pre pre foreclosure uh, database, trying to build and nurture those leads a little bit before uh, everyone else that hits that pre foreclosure, uh, you know, kind of world. Yeah. Um, and then the free and clear that you talk about, but then the, the most, you know, the most popular one, the, the, the biggest exciting one, I think for us is where it's, you know, evolving to where a majority you think of the purchases in the throughout the year are going to head is that, is that downsizing that baby boomer, uh, that senior market that's really going to start to to be a majority of these transactions, you know. Yeah, that that's probably what I'm most excited about too. I know you and I are probably known most for talking about absentee owners, but really, we're the biggest. Um, where, where the biggest opportunity is, is that, is that demographic you just said, and in, in, in our, maybe our episode next week, you and I can talk, we'll go super deep on that downsizer opportunity, yeah. but, but you're, you're exactly right. I think what we need to do is again, I think a real estate agent is going to find that if they specialize in one of these things where they know how to uh, position themselves, Jared, to stand out from the crowd to be the obvious choice because they've specialized in this niche. Right. It'll be a lot easier for them to find opportunities, generate leads, get listings. And then when they interview to get these listings, it's so easy for them to convert right. because 
they can communicate with a homeowner unlike any other agent is able to do. So let's, as an example, let's talk about the divorce niche for a second, right? right. That was the other one, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's huge. I mean, let's think about this for a second. I mean, you can work with a company like yours and we can go and get files for people that have filed for divorce and we can communicate these to these folks um, because the likelihood of them selling their home and buying a new home, it's probably like over 90%. Right. And in all the divorce attorneys that I work with, they, the stat they give me is over 80% of all divorces end up with a uh, property being sold. And so here's a specific opportunity for a real estate agent to go into, let's just say a city. And instead of calling or knocking on doors or sending mass mailers to random people, right. who, we don't know if they're going to buy or sell ever. Why don't you go and get the 500 people that just filed for a divorce in the last 30 days? and call all of them. Your right. likelihood of running into somebody that's going to move is just so much so higher. So much greater. Do you, um, what is the, what do you tell your students? Uh, how many niches do they need to, to have in their tool belt? Three to five lead sources. That's what I, that's what people, right. that's my recommendation. Um, cool. No less than three and five is plenty. Like if you have five lead generation pillars, and you have a strategy for going after all five of those, I think it's right. plenty. For Is it like going to the Cheesecake Factory menu where you're like, open that thing up and it's like 75 pages of your niches? <laughs> right, well, well and, and, and that's a great point. You know, it's like, I think realtors that they, they hear me on this podcast or they watch one of my YouTube videos and they're trying to go after all the niches. Like right, that's right. not the point here. Would you agree with that from, a, from like a sales and marketing perspective? Like, would you agree conceptually with what I just said as far as, you don't need to go after 500 niches because you're not specializing in anything. That's the opposite approach to what we're right. talking about. Right. There's a there's a book, another book I read. This, the second book I read besides yours is being the first. But it talks about like people not being good at, at multitasking or maybe over niching, right? So special, right. you know, figure out what your specialty is, what you speak well, uh, you know, with and 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 build off of that and become that, you know, quote unquote expert. I mean, just because of Father Time, you know, we uh, at the Share Group have become, you know, a, a group of database experts, but we've been doing this a long time. So I think as you build your your niches up, you know, you can really specialize in what you're good at and what you're comfortable with. And then you kind of just rinse and repeat, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, the opposite of, of niching down and spreading yourself thin, I mean, that's the opposite of niching. That's a generalist. Right. So, so if you look at like the general practitioner, like the doctor, right. I mean, dude, they're making, they make like 80 grand a year. You know what I mean? They don't make anything right. in comparison to the brain surgeon who's making millions of dollars. They do one thing. Right. And so most realtors cannot fathom this, Jared, because you, we have to bring up the scarcity mindset in this podcast. It's like, well, if I niche down, what about I'm losing out all, on, on all these other opportunities? This is like most entrepreneurs, by the way. Right. They're so scared to go to a specific niche because they see opportunity everywhere. I have this conversation with so many people every single day. Right. It's like, oh, I want to start this business. I want to start this business. I want to, I want to have this. I want to have that. It's like, dude, if you do all those things, you become a general practitioner <laughs> and your income goes down because you're spreading yourself thin. It's like the, uh, it's like the little... Uh, game we all used to play, probably not an ice game, but like you, you take the magnifying glass out on a summer day <laughs> and like it hones in all that energy, like on an ant and like, yeah, yeah, flame you know, up. Yeah. It, it, what? We burn it up. Yeah. But we burn like, it up. Yeah, we burn yeah. it up. And so, like, that's what we're talking about. So, like, hyper focusing on one tactic or strategy will allow you to, like, if you niche down, you can blow up your business. But it's not, it's not that easy though, too, Brandon. When you think about it, I mean, look at look at me as a database, you know, guru. We didn't niche down to real estate until four or five years ago, you know, and we were niching in insurance and auto and timeshare. And so we were this data general practitioner, you know, and then yeah. And now we're figuring out that, uh, that you need to be uh, very niche specific and, and, and hone in what you're good at. And, and yeah. that's kind of what we're trying to practice, what we preach too. So it's just kind yeah. of, yeah, I mean, it, and, and so, all right. So now once hopefully people are, are, uh, they've opened their eyes to like specialization, right? If, if people would take right. that advice, it's a lot easier to go out there and generate business that way, because imagine a world you say, well, I give lists to everyone. Like as a marketing message at the share right. group, you would get no one. You right. know what I mean? Right. You would get nobody. But when you can say, hey, we provide the best quality listing leads to real estate agents, 
that marketing message becomes so much stronger in the marketplace. Would you agree with that? Absolutely more valuable. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, solving the the problem. Yeah, that's exactly right. So once I think the next step is once a real estate agent says, okay, I'm going to pick this niche. Now they would contact somebody like you create okay. this list. And now all of your messaging, all of your scripting, all of your marketing lead generation uh, efforts can be honed in to communicate with a certain demographic that is much more likely for them to respond to because right. you nailed it. It's solving a specific pain point. So Going back to the divorce niche as an example, there's thousands of them, but right. imagine uh, you you communicating with a list of a thousand people that are going through divorce, who are looking to sell a home, and they need to understand the process of divorce real estate. Or we take the downsizers, the senior who's now an empty nester looking to downsize right. and looking at a strategy specifically to help those folks. You know, how, how have you guys taken... I guess the approach of like, okay, you've got your specific targeted demographic and how we're going to go market to those folks. Right. So, and we try to, you know, take it as a, as a case by case conversation, you know, what market are they in? What, you know, what value are they able to add, um, you know, to the, to the prospects that we're able to provide. But I mean, we have over, you know, 250 to 500 different demographics that are available on the data. So, I mean, you can so say that one more time. So people got it. How many? <laughs> 250 to 500 different demographics. I mean, I'll I can send the data dictionary of it's, it's amazing within the different data feeds that we get or the, the demographic information that you can really niche. I mean, specifically if someone wanted to focus on Spanish speaking in Miami, I mean, we could even wow. filter with ethnicity, you know, or what they're, what they're comfortable with. Um, there's a guy that I have in Reno that wants conservative, uh, individuals like, you know, kind of the the right wing side. And he, um, he had multiple listings from the list that we customized based off of what he was comfortable with. So getting on the phone, building, uh, you know, that conversation to build those niches. I mean, they're outside of some of the ones that we're, we're talking about or what we've segmented based off of, you know, what's going on within the times. And I think the data that we have in the different feeds allows us to kind of segment and niche based off of people's specialties, I guess, or their experience. What, what would you, I mean, for the, for the real estate agents who really get it and they say, I get the value of specialization and niching down, wh- what is the most popular? Is it still absentee owners? Yeah, absentee is kind of like I said, we we hang our hat on that. And so that's kind of where we focus. That's our niche, you know, to to the value and just because of the times, but the likely to sell, we have a, a kid, he's 20 years old and like outside of San Fran, 20 year old real estate agent that gets three to four listings every 400 bucks he spends and wow. he loves the likely to sell. Uh, and so I, I think the likely to sell works. Um, you know, you got to be careful on how you pitch those distress, those bad credit, right. those divorced. But if yeah. you have the same you want a fair offer for your property, you know, pitch, then you're going to have successful successes with any of the, you know, the niches that we've created. And I think that's what's, uh, you know, we kind of put our money where our mouth is. We wouldn't really pitch a niche without knowing we've had success with it. Yeah. Exactly. And you guys that are, are, are either watching this replay on YouTube or listening to this on the podcast, we'll link to the share group. So you guys can work with Jared's team specifically uh, to start to create some of these lists that we're talking about, because the question I get all day, every day on Instagram is where do I get these leads? Where do I get these leads? And it's like, I can only say the share group so many times. So you guys, I'm going to link to the share group, uh, beneath this, this video. But what I was going to say was, you know, um, you know, the, the thing is when communicating with a specific niche, I think you brought up something really important. And I get a lot of questions about this. It's like, okay, well, I've got a list of, of people that have, let's just say filed for probate as an example, you know, you don't necessarily bring this up. Like somebody that's going through a divorce, maybe even so you don't call them and say, Hey, is this Jared? Jared, I see that you just filed for a divorce. I'm sorry to hear that. Like, that's not what we're talking about here. (laughs) What we're talking about here is communicating with a homeowner uh, the same way you would any homeowner. The only difference is all the people you're contacting, the likelihood of them looking to sell. That's the difference. That is the difference. And, and it's such a, a value add and it's such a small, small difference. We had a lady uh, that bought a distress list and she called us and was appalled. Her friend was on that list. And she's like, it would have ruined my reputation if I called her. And we're like, what were you going to say to her? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, like, all you were going to say is like, would you like a fair offer for your house? But she just didn't understand the concept of like, she took it to heart what we were probably, you know, pitching or, or providing, but it was just kind of a, 
a learning experience for us, you know? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, but, but here's the thing. I think people are really, they're just not, they're, they're missing this. They're, they're this point, like it just screws up people so bad to your point. It's like, right. dude, you were going to call a hundred random homeowners and use some type of script that says, Hey, you know, values are at all time highs. Right. If you could get a great offer on your property, would you consider to sell? They got no problem with that. Random right. people. What right. we're saying, I think Jared is like, well, instead of calling the hundred random people, why don't we give you a hundred people that are likely to sell, use the same script. Right. And then right. the, the amount of people that say yes to that question is a lot higher when you have a targeted list. That's what we're saying. And that's exactly what we're saying. I love it. There's another lady that gave us some feedback and she was, um, you know, she's like, I had a lot of, a couple of bad numbers, you know? And, and I was yeah. like, well, how many did you call? She's like, well, first of all, I did get one listing and I'm like, well, that's really good. How many did you call? She said a hundred leads. Okay. <laughs> and we're like, what? That's yeah. really good. You know, yeah. it's just funny to, to set that expectation of these people. And a lot of your students, and I bet a lot of your growing pains are these, you know, startup agents that you have yeah. to you know, teach them to take that cold shower and, and, uh, and create that mindset. Right. And that's, that's what right. I'm preaching to my people is a uh, mindset, such a powerful tool, man. So it's all mindset. And that's a future episode for sure. Yeah, cool. talking about mindset, but like, I, I think to kind of put a bow on this thing, it's like, you know, this show is all built upon how do we come up with, how do we give the best tactics and strategies from an advice perspective? So a real estate agent has the the best chance of going out there and securing new listings. And the yeah. takeaway from today's episode is if you're going to go do the work anyways, and the work meaning you're going to call people, you're going to knock on their doors, you're going to send them uh, uh, messages on Facebook, you're going to send out direct mail, you're going to do Facebook ads, whatever it is you're going to do anyways, all Jared and I are recommending is that you put that message in front of the right audience. Right. And I think people listening or watching this replay can conceptualize that. We just want to bring this message to this community of, of, of agents that I think is really missing the boat on this. And yeah. that's why I'm so thankful to partner with, with people like yourself, because you're the one that puts this into action to make it happen. Oh, I appreciate that. No, in a, in food for thought down the road, like I said, for another topic too, is like, once you have that database of niches built, how do you maintain and keep it update, updated, yeah. you know, from an address perspective and, and a, you know, a database enhancement. And there's, there's some other things that we can kind of educate these guys on. And, and I love the, the fact that you're out there helping. And that's exactly what we want to do uh, is to be able to help. So, you know, being a part of this is pretty awesome. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So, dude, I appreciate you coming on the show like always. And uh, yeah. Looking forward to our episode next week. And if you guys have recommendations or things that you want Jared and I to cover on the show, just use the comments section beneath this video and let us know which topics specifically maybe you're struggling with that you want Jared and I to spend 20, 30 minutes going deep on that will help you overcome those challenges. Jared and I would be happy to do that. So appreciate it. I'll link Absolutely. up to all of uh, Jared's team's information beneath this video to the share group. But the point is niche down to blow up your business, get out of this mindset of being this general practitioner. That doesn't mean that if you get a referral from somebody outside of your niche, you're not going to sell them a house. It just means you're going to focus your energy and your attention with your lead generation going after a specific targeted group of people. So the likelihood of you securing a new listing is higher. Any last uh, pieces of recommendation, Jared? No, that that's uh, that sums it up. I think uh, I think I heard it, uh, you know, recently in a podcast. I think niches get riches. I think is the the right term uh, to have, right? Uh, and, yep. and you 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 paint the great picture uh, with the the general practitioner analogy, and I think that's uh, that's an important thing to, to to have in the back of your head. Cool. Well, my brother, I appreciate it. Make sure Amen. you guys that are watching this. Uh, tickets go on sale today, actually, for our first live event uh, to the Reverse Selling Summit in October 28th and 29th. So make sure you guys grab your tickets for that. Come hang out with Jared and I live yeah. in person. Come learn the best tactics and strategies in the industry to go out there and build a great listing business. So we'll see you guys on next uh, next episode. Appreciate you guys listening and watching.